Hello, today is May 23rd, 2001. We're at the Battleship New Jersey BB-62, now birthed at Camden, New Jersey. My name is Dr. Tom Bennett, and I'm interviewing today Mr. John Gilday of Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania, who served aboard the Battleship New Jersey from November 1950 to November 1952. He served as a deckhand, third division, and with the 16-inch guns. Uh, I'm working with Mr. Paul Lobauer of Pro Media of Mount Laurel, New Jersey. John, thank you for coming to talk with us today. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, the first question I ask John is your early uh, experiences with the New Jersey. How did you get to come aboard the ship? What training did you undergo and how did you end up on the boat? Well, I was in the Naval Reserves at the time. And of course, the Korean War broke out in 19, June of 50. And I volunteered for active duty. How old were you, if I may ask? Uh, 22. 22. At the yeah, I was a little older than the rest of the crew, yeah. And I went aboard the ship uh, in November, right before it was recommissioned. And it was the first experience I had with uh, battleships. Well, I had requested capital ships when I asked for active duty. And uh, of course, uh, this was given in New Jersey. So I was very happy about that. I, what was your training before while you were in the Navy Reserve? What was your specialty? Just, just regular drilling and uh, uh, taking courses on uh, deck, deck work and things like that, which was very, you, you couldn't do too much in a, in a building where uh, you, you wouldn't have the facilities for deck work, but you learned enough. Yeah. Okay. So you come aboard New Jersey in your deck hand, but you're also assigned to the 16-inch guns. Yes. Let's focus on your work there with the guns a bit. Uh, which gun were you assigned to, and what did you do I was in Turret 3, which is, uh, Turret 3 is the third turret. turret. Division 1 had Division Turret 1, Division 2 had the, Turret 2, and Division 3 had Turret 3. Now, I was actually uh, worked in the turret, but only as a, as a, uh, as a uh, in the turret crew. I wasn't assigned to the turret as a working station. My working station was on a deck. I was at the deck ape, deck hand, yeah. We, we called them deck apes, yeah. Was the, the derogatory term was your deck ape, yeah. And we actually it would sweep the decks, uh, maintain the jack in uh, an orderly fashion, and uh, whatever we had to do with the deck work, mm -hmm. uh, tying up the ship at times when we used to come into port and everything. And the only time we were really in the turret was when we were in general quarters. And what was your duty in the turret? I was a powder hoist operator, lower powder hoist operator. For the first couple of months, I was in the turret. Then I was signed to the uh, trainer uh, station, which actually moved the turret left and right. Mm -hmm. And that's where my station was for, well, probably half the time I was there, half the time I was on the powder hoist operator. Began with the powder hoist operator. I worked in the powder room, and the powder would be put into uh, like elevator type things, dumb waiter type things, which would then go up to the gun level. It would go from six decks down to the gun level, where they would unload the trays. Then the tray would come down again. We'd put six more powder bags in it, and we'd go up again and unload the powder again. Then we were done for that particular load. Mm -hmm. And they would do this for the three guns in the turret. Yeah. How many people would be part of the turret crew? About 120. 120 people yeah. part of the turret crew. And each person had a very specific job. Every person has a specific job, yes. Did, any, did you get cross-trained in any no, other No, not ordinarily. No, not that I know of, except I was in the, as I said, I was a powder hoist operator, lower powder hoist operator, but later on became the trainer. Or t uh, the trainer, yes. Uh, but uh, I wasn't cross-trained for any other job, I just happen to get sure. another job, that's all. Describe to, a, to us what it's like uh, working in a turret. Is it busy, crowded, Very dirty? confining, mm -hmm. very hot. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know what things going is outside. Mm -hmm. Everything's inside. You're doing your own job, and that's all you care about, mm -hmm. getting this job done. And that's, uh, I mean, nothing else mattered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How heavy was the powder bags that you would handle? I don't believe, I think there were 50 pounds, but I'm not sure. I, I didn't handle the powder myself. Mm -hmm. I was in the room where the powder was put in the trays, then the trays would be brought up to the gun room. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I never actually, I, I think maybe I lifted a bag up, but I can't remember exactly. Maybe 50 pounds, yeah. And who would be in charge of a 16 inch gun? There was an officer or several yeah, officers? There was a couple officers in charge. It was the turret captain. Mm -hmm. He was usually the officer of the division. Mm -hmm. There was a gun captain, and each of the guns, which would be three, gun, right gun, left gun, and center gun, each one would have a captain inside the gun room. Mm -hmm. And inside that room, there would be the gun captain, 
uh, uh, the rammer operator, uh, two men to handle the powder and the shell, and a rammerman and a primerman. Yeah. Did I mention rammerman twice? Yeah, well, anyway. It was a proud, probably six men in the gun room itself. Yeah. How often did you train on the gun? Well, we had firing practice when we were down to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a place they have where the naval forces would be uh, go to, had a mountain, the side of a mountain that had a bullseye on it, and you would uh, train uh, firing on the, onto that. But we had no control over the firing itself. I'm, well, the, we would just load the gun, and uh, there was controls for firing it. We had nothing to do with now, that. Now, when you were serving um, aboard the ship off of Korea, the ship was involved in shell, uh, shore bombardment? Yes, sir. Tell us what it's like to be involved in that situation when you're working actively in a gun. Well, they say you're inside, you really didn't know anything about it. I'll tell you a funny story, uh, well, not a funny story, a story that we have. We had uh, firing practice, in, a firing operation in, at the harbor of Wonsan. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we were firing in Wonsan, and a shell came and hit us from the beach. and. Uh, we had a what they call a battle narrator, happened to be the Catholic chaplain, Father Brewerton. And he was narrating what was going on. And he said, we got hit by a shell. In fact, we had one man killed. And I understand later on that there was nobody from the New Jersey killed in World War II Correct. by enemy action. Correct. We had a man killed by enemy action in our operation. So what we did was we fired on the mountain where the gun was. But we couldn't get the gun itself, so it caved in the mountain. That, uh, that was our revenge. That know. was the power of the gun. That was the power. Yes. We caved in the mountain. Actually, the Father Buerden was saying the mountain is caved in. The gun is covered up with whatever who's inside. It's, they, it actually was a railroad gun. which it would run out, fire, run back in again, reload, come back and fire. So when it went in, we just blew the mountain up. How many, how many times that you were aboard the ship did the New Jersey actually uh, conduct firing operations in Korea? Uh, 10, I, 20, 30? Uh, oh, just, uh, well, every time we went out, we would we would leave uh, Yokosuka and uh, go out for 30 days, and we were firing for 30 days. And then we'd come back for 10, mm -hmm. reload ammunition, provisions, and then go out for 30 days again. But mo and most of the time, we were on fire missions. You're on fire yeah. missions, most yes. Of the time. Did you use just the 16-inch guns, or were five-inch guns? Oh, 16 and five. And five, yeah. But the 16-inch were for further when we were further out, 20 mile 20 mile range. And of course, the five-inch one—they got in closer. Yeah. Somebody told me earlier that when the 16-inch guns fired, no matter where you were in the ship, you felt it. I was down in the handling room where we didn't know they fired. You didn't, didn't know they. We knew they fired, yeah. but we didn't hear it. We, we wouldn't. Hear it. We knew they fired because they, the, the powder hoist would come down empty. Sure. And uh, but we didn't hear it. We didn't know. That was the first experience we had to fire. We. we it was really when you went to general quarters the first time for the firing mission to practice, and we were everybody was anticipating what's happened, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and as a, as it turned out, he said, "Well, they fired the shells. We didn't even know they fired." <laughs> You're so deep in a ship, you yes. didn't feel it at all. You, now you, outside on the main deck, you might have felt it, yeah, but I don't know about. It. What was the reaction of the Navy personnel, the Marines, the personnel aboard the ship, towards the war in Korea, since you were actively supporting troops ashore and yeah. shelling? What was the reaction towards it? Do you recall? Uh, just that we were we were on a, we were doing a job. That's all. We were here to do a job to uh, beat the communist and get the war over with and get back home. That's basically what we were. The only thing we were interested in. Yeah. When you're on an operation, a 30-day operation, um, was it very tiring for the crew? To yes, be on it duty? was yeah. very tiring because you were on. Uh, four on and eight off, mm -hmm. uh, four hours on duty, for eight hours off. So you never got a full night's sleep. Mm -hmm. You're, uh, it was always uh, four hours off, four hours on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to uh, another friend of mine and he, during World War II, and they were on three three shifts of uh, duty, and we were on on and off. So it, we were quite tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once you finished your firing for the day or even for training or actual combat operation, what did you have to do to maintain your, your area? Well we, well, we were deckhands, so we didn't really do anything in the turret. Okay. We, we, I mean, once we left the turret, we were out of mm -hmm. it. Uh, we may have had some cleaning up to do on the deck, but uh, other than that, we, we didn't have anything to do with cleaning it inside the turret itself. Let's talk a little bit about the deckhand work. Uh, yes. What are some things that would occupy you as a deckhand daily work aboard the ship? Well, we had a sweep down in the first thing in the morning, 
and then we go. We would go to breakfast, and come back at eight o'clock and have muster, and then after muster we would go on the ship's work, which was like painting, chipping paint, painting, a lot of painting. I mean, it was our job. Deck hate, deck work is an awful lot of painting, mm -hmm. and chipping, chipping paint with a chipping hammer, mm -hmm. and you chip off the bad rust part, put yellow chromate on, and then you put the gray battleship gray on, and a lot of work on that, yeah. And then on, on Fridays, we'd have field day, every Friday. Except if we were in battle operations, and then we wouldn't have field day. But we'd have field day uh, if most of the time, and uh, it was uh, cleaning down the decks and holy rocking the ship with the holy rocking the decks. Talk a little bit about the holy rock. What uh, is it? A holy, and describe uh, how you use it. Yeah, it's, a, it's a brick of about the size of a brick. It had a little indentation in the center of it, and it was abrasive. And you use the stick, and you would just go back and forth with the stick like this. And then you shift to the next board. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, shift. One, two, three, four, five, six, shift. And you would shift each board. And these are all the crew was spread out. Your division was spread out all over the main deck. And you would cover, eventually cover every part of the deck with your. What's the, why are you wholly rocking the deck? What does that do to the team? Whitens the deck. Whitens the deck. Whitens the deck. It didn't do anything as far as a creating effective grip or anything on the deck? No, or, it just or? took off, it, it smoothed it out. It smoothed it out and whitened it, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, of course, the deck isn't what it, that deck doesn't look like it used to look when I was on it. Mm -hmm. when, it would have been better, I'm sure. Well, much better. Sure. You could eat off the deck. You could eat off the deck. Eat the off the deck. Like yeah. to have and many a time I see guys come up and stuff a cigarette out on the deck and boy, they got their air stream down. Yeah, pardon me, but, yeah. 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 Um, what's your, as you look back, uh, what's your reaction to serving aboard the New Jersey. It was a great experience. I, I think I always say it was uh, something I never forget. And I was glad I had the experience of serving on New Jersey. Uh, uh, it was just a great experience. Why was it great? Just just being in the Navy and uh, serving on a capital ship and having the, the all the, uh, I, the I, I, people say, I, I think the expression to use, um, uh, that you wouldn't have on a, a destroyer or a smaller ship. The regulations, you had to wear a, a cap at all times. You had to wear a, a specified uniform. They was specified uniform of the day. And regulations, and to me, I was a, a regulation sailor. I like being, not being told what to wear, but, mm -hmm. but this was the way you should be done. Mm -hmm. you know, spit and polish sailor. Uh, Who was the captain of the ship during we the We had two captains. We had a David Tyree, uh, for the first year, and then Francis McCorkle for the second year. Yeah, the two years I was aboard. Mm -hmm. David Tar. How did the crew like the captains? <laughs> they were tough. Yes, I guess they were tough. They were captains, and they had to be they, tough. They do what they have to. They do. had to be tough. Yes. Sure. When you're 19 years old, you look at a, a senior officer one way versus when you're 50 or 60. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, how is, I, I quite often close with the question, how is the, uh, your service aboard New Jersey during the Korean War, how has that impacted on your later life? Nothing except that I, I'm always proud to tell people I was aboard New, aboard New Jersey, and I, I don't let any, I make sure people know about that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I was proud of it. I was proud of the four, two years I served, yeah. Mm -hmm.